It was my last day in Mexico, and I was about to get on a flight to the other side of the world. But it would come to be a long trip with some trouble along the way. So I'm here in Playa del Carmen. I've been in Mexico for almost two years. I traveled all over Mexico and it was a really incredible time and also I think the right country to be during the pandemic. Mexico has actually really great freedom. I don't think I've ever been to a country where I felt more free, <laughs> like um, just in general. And also one of the only, or actually the only country I've been to where you get six months when you land in the country. Mexico, you just fly in, you get the six months tourist visa. I don't think you can get that anywhere else in the world. So I have a flight to Europe tomorrow actually and uh, I need to go and get the antigen test here at this pharmacy so I can get on the flight tomorrow. So I paid in here 20 dollars, 400 pesos and they have a little doctor next to the pharmacy. Usually they have a doctor next to the pharmacy in Mexico. I got my negative antigen test and the next day I had packed my bag and was at the ADO bus station again. I'm about to get on the bus uh, and go up to Cancun to the international airport and then fly to uh, Europe. It's really hot. Oof. But uh, I'm really excited to uh, go back to Europe actually. It's been a long time and uh, also it will be interesting to see what it's like to fly around in the world at this time. So I missed the bus by uh, like two minutes. But the next one is in 30 minutes and it will take me straight into the Cancun airport. 216 pesos, um, $10. And uh, yeah, I've taken these um, ADO buses actually all over Mexico in the past uh, two years almost. And uh, I think it's the best uh, bus company. All the buses are really modern. I got on the bus and was about to head out of Mexico. It had been two really incredible years and I was going along the coast of the state of Quintana Roo for the last time, up to the airport in Cancun. So I'm here at Terminal 4 in Cancun. It's an international airport. It's the first time I'm actually here at the Terminal 4. I've never been here. I've been to, I think, all the other ones. Uh, so it will be interesting to go into this one. They had some heat cameras by the entrance to detect if somebody had fever. The check-in process was quite slow and I had to show my negative antigen test to the company called Condor. Uh, I met some people down there and they told me now this year they are implementing some kind of tax or some kind of fee just to go to Mexico. They gave me this, it says mandatory every time you visit uh, Quintana Roo. Uh, this is the state, this is where the most of the tourism is. Uh, they say everybody has to pay. Um, everybody has to pay. What is it? This. <laughs> and also they are saying now it's way harder to get into Mexico. They are starting to not give out 180 days like they used to is what I heard. I don't know if it's true. But um, a lot of people are speaking about that online now. When you go to Mexico you're not guaranteed anymore to get six months. Before I was let into the gates I also had to fill out some kind of documents regarding COVID-19. So I'm sitting here now, I'm trying to fill in out this um, questionnaire, but it's not loading and the line is just getting longer and longer here with people. Everybody seems to be having troubles with this because um, it's just loading and um, you don't have an option either to fill it out with the pen and paper, so you need a phone and um, they apparently have some trouble with their page. So everybody's getting frustrated here, people are starting to get late for the flights and it's just filling up with more and more people. It's getting more and more complicated to fly these days. It is. It took me about 25 minutes to fill out the form, but some people had trouble connecting to the Wi-Fi. I came through and now I'm here at the um, tax freak. Didn't have any uh, problems, only that they almost took my tuna. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now I'm inside. So we are, we have to find the gate. buy some Panda Express for my last pesos. So I'm about to board the plane here, a nine hour flight to uh, Germany. Good morning. 
does the ski of I came into the flight going to Frankfurt in Germany and you had to be wearing a mask the whole time. The trip would go all across the Atlantic Ocean and would take about nine and a half hours to get to Germany. I came into the toilet now and uh, we finally uh, started heading out from Cancun. <laughs> and uh, I'm really excited to be uh, on the way. For dinner we got some kind of pasta dish with salad and bread and also had to pay $9 extra to see some movies. Usually it's free. So now we are in the middle or I think we're below Iceland now. Yeah, on the Atlantic Ocean uh, between the United States and uh, the United Kingdom. And I came into the toilet again because there's no light out there. Uh, I'm getting kind of tired actually. But uh, only about three more hours before we are in uh, Germany, Deutschland. I can't envision Deutschland. I've been now Sweden. Oh, there's a bit of turbulence. We had arrived in Germany, located just beneath Denmark and Sweden. It's uh, 10 in the morning in Germany. So cold here. Whoa, really cold. So I'm going to a connecting flight and uh, I'm in front of everybody here. Everybody's behind me from my flight. Uh, but I think I have to go through uh, the passport control even though I have a connecting flight because we came from uh, Mexico into uh, Europe or yeah, Germany <laughs> 10 hour flight I didn't sleep anything now it's like 5 in the morning Mexico time but here it's 9 in the morning 7 hours ahead so I came through the passport control and they asked me nothing they just looked at my passport for a few seconds Maybe because I have a Swedish passport and I have a connecting flight, probably. I was on my way through the security again and got stopped and had some trouble. Sir, your bag is full with electronic. I was stopped for a while and all my electronics had been put on five different trays to be scanned several times. They had called for extra police officers and one of them was holding my passport. So the weirdest thing ever just happened. The guy took out like every single piece of electronic that I had. They said here in Germany you need to bring, if you have electronics, every single piece of electronic needs to come out of the bag and put on in one of those trays. All my electronics out of the bag. I have probably 50 or 60 pieces of electronics that had to come out of the bag and onto the trays. It took forever, probably 25 minutes to go through the uh, security control. The strange thing about this also was that the guy called like three other police officers and um, yeah and one of them took my passport. <laughs> it was like seemed like a really big deal to have a lot of electronics. I don't get it. Ooh, I had to come into the toilet to feel like I can <laughs> relax and breathe a bit. It's really, it seems really, really strict to Germany. It's never, I've never seen Europe like this before. Like, everybody was looking at me when I went through the um, control, whatever you call it. <laughs> Three police officers came and one of them took my passport immediately. Started asking me a bunch of questions. Where did you come from? Why do you have so much electronics? <laughs> it's been a hectic type of traveling. I don't like traveling that much or flying especially after the pandemic it's way different way way different my tuna and rice cans had been questioned in every control but had made it through safely okay. 
taking a bus to the boarding. I had been awake for more than 24 hours and the Scandinavian Airlines plane took off heading to Stockholm in Sweden, a two-hour direct flight. I went through the Stockholm archipelago and surprisingly there was no snow on the ground. It's not as cold as I thought it would be. But this time of the year is supposed to be really cold. Yeah, usually at this time of the year it will be snow and like <laughs> minus 5 Fahrenheit, minus 25 Celsius. So I actually didn't have to go through any kind of passport control. Sometimes it's like that when you get back to Europe. You don't need to uh, show your passport. I don't know why. I bought a bus ticket for 139 Swedish kronor which is about 15 US dollars. I bought a ticket for one of the buses that go into Stockholm city. Uh, it's the biggest city and the capital of Sweden, Stockholm, with one million people. So that's where I'm going to now, if I'm going the right way, I don't know. Hey, do you go flygbussarna härifrån? From... Precis, rakt right ner. Okay, thank I was back in my home country, but not to stay for good. There are still places in the world I want to see. And having just one bag with my belongings has really increased my freedom in life and the number one reason that has made it possible for me to travel for years. So I came out of the bus and it's cold and windy. We have to find the train now. <laughs> the train back to my hometown. I think it's in here. Wow, it's so nice. There's no requirement to wear a mask here in Sweden anywhere. Ha, huh, perfect. First country I've been to where you don't need to uh, wear a mask. There's like huge crowds of people here and no requirement. Oh, so nice. I was wearing it when I was in Germany. People were going crazy there with the masks. Here is the Stockholm Central Station for trains. It's the biggest train station, I think, in all of Sweden. Full of people and they have uh, Christmas decorations in the ceiling here. So those signs you saw there, uh, departures of the trains going all around Sweden. You can buy the train ticket here on, in the, one of these uh, green ones. Oh, I'm going down to track number 13. It's leaving here from the underground. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired. I must have been awake for 30 hours now. I just remember now how tall people are here. When I was in Mexico, I felt so tall because everyone was so short there. Now I came back here and everyone is really, really tall. <laughs> There's a stereotype that everyone is blonde in Sweden, so I'm gonna film all the people passing by here and we're gonna see for ourselves if the stereotype is true or not. So most of the trains uh, have two stories here, really big and modern trains actually. Here we have uh, this one. This train was supposed to leave at uh, 4.54 and uh, it didn't leave at 4.54 so now two other trains come into the same platform uh, where this train was supposed to depart from and then uh, it said uh, the destination where I was going on the train so everybody went on the train and then when everybody was on the train apparently they changed the 
uh, end destination to another <laughs> to another uh, to another town. So everybody had to get off the train now. Uh, yeah. All of a sudden, when the train had arrived, they just changed their destination to another destination. <laughs> the trains in Sweden are really modern, but sometimes they are really late and delayed. I had been awake for so long and now going on the final trip, a one hour train ride west to the city of Eskilstuna from Stockholm. My brother is in the United States, my father lives in another town and my sister is five hours away in the south part of Sweden so I would go and see my mother first. I'm back in Eskilstuna where I was born and where I grew up. Thanks for watching, please if you liked the video leave it a thumbs up, post a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.